Okay gang, you may have seen in some of my other videos, I had a uh, 2011 GMC Sierra. Love the truck, fantastic truck, but due to some other uh, situations, I had to sell it. But I picked up this 2000 model Chevy Z71. Now it has 256,000 miles on it, and I got it from a friend of mine. And it's an LT, it's fully loaded, uh, runs great, drives great, for the most part. But as with these trucks, you can see the gap between the wheel well and the tire. And up front, it's got issues. Let's just say something's worn out, and I'm pretty sure the torsion bar is. But I'm not going to invest in a new set of torsion bars. They're over $300 a piece from Chevy. But what I'm going to do is put some new keys on it, new torsion bar keys. Now, I ordered this kit from Summit. Pro ride and you can see there it's got duck head on it it's got uh, new new keepers for the bolts two different lengths of bolts and they point out this kit here is really for worn out torsion bars so that's gonna be me um, it also has some shock extenders and I also bought some new shocks for it, just some Monroe's gasmatics nothing special um, but I'm gonna try to do this and try to fix this truck because right now it's pretty much riding on the bump stops and knocks your teeth loose every time you hit a bump and it's just rough to drive other than that it's a great truck but uh, I'm gonna go through the steps and see if I can't uh, figure out a way to get this these keys changed I know you're supposed to use a torsion bar and loading tool I've gone online uh, I've seen some people use two jar two jaw pullers uh, a ball joint um, press that you can buy or rent from AutoZone or Advance. So I'm going to see what I can come up with and uh, try to get this truck looking and riding better. Okay, so I'm under the truck and here's your torsion bars. There's the keys. You can see the right one, the right uh, key still had some adjustment left, but not nearly enough to fix it. And look at that left side. Sorry. A little shaky there very little left on that left side so I'm gonna do is take a 18 millimeter socket on a half inch drive ratchet and uh, take the tension off of those now they say to do one side at a time so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna work on this right side and see if I can't take care of it first okay I've taken the uh, top mount bolt or nut loose off the shock so it's at full extension right now and I'm gonna try this two draw puller technique that I've read about and see if it works okay so I have some tension on the two draw puller and I've turned the uh, key up slightly put a little more load on the torsion bar and that has given me enough room pull out the uh, bolt carrier or keeper or whatever you want to call it now I don't know if this is going to work when I put the new key in because it'll be indexed differently and might take a lot more load but uh, for now uh, I can at least get the first one out and see what happens from there okay so there's enough play in my torsion bar up front um, that I don't have to try to worry about getting it out of the control arm. Now back here, um, I put some lubricant on it because the, the key was seized a little bit. And I sprayed some you know WD-40 type stuff on there. And I hit a hammer on, on the faces here and knocked it loose as well. So now, there it is. So now the fun part of getting the uh, new key up in place. And let me see, you can see the difference here. Let me turn it the right way. There's the difference in the keys. See how, see how far that one's much further down than the original. And uh, hopefully I can get it back up in there and use the same trick with the uh, two jaw puller and get it back in, get it done. Okay, it's in, but it did feel a little shaky. Um, had a lot of load and a lot of side load. Now I've, I've loosened this up already, but I had a lot of side load on this. So I made myself a little shield. 
what I did. <laughs> I wasn't going to have that thing spring off and hit me in the face or chest or arm. So I put that up in front of me, put my knee up on it, and I used my uh, ratchet that extends out so I could tighten it up. And then I slipped the uh, carrier up there in the hole up here. Still has some tension on it, but it's in. And now I can uh, thread one of the longer bolts. I'm going to use the long bolts. So I'll thread one of those in, and that should uh, take care of the passenger side. Okay, bolts in, got tension on it. I don't know if you can see very well. I, looks like it's in the socket like it needs to be. So, uh, wasn't too bad. I still have to do some adjustment. Once I get the other side done, then I can check my height and uh, try to make sure it's squared up, get the shocks on, be good to go. And there it is. Now this is that Pro Ride rekey on the torsion bars. Um, picked it up from Summit. It was like $200. You can get a cheaper set, but it doesn't come with the uh, little bolt carrier or, the, or different bolt lengths. But you can see the difference. You know, before that front end was hanging so low, it was just terrible. And uh, I wasn't going for a big lift kit. I just wanted to get it back up to a level position. And I think it looks good. Again, I'm not looking for a monster truck, just a good driver that I can tow with if I need to. So, the only thing left to do is take it for a ride. Wow, what an improvement. When I would drive this truck uh, before I did this, this thing rode like a, a buckboard, man. You'd hit a bump and your teeth would rattle. And now I've got this leased up, you know, in a good, good location as far as height. And uh, I wasn't looking for a big monster lift kit, but man, what a difference uh, fixing those keys or fixing the torsion bars and also putting on a pair of um, gasmatic shocks. Even though they're cheap shocks, they're doing a the job and this truck rides so much better now. Much happier.